nostalgic players, man. You can't, you can't start talking about nostalgia when you don't mention Ian Wright. I don't care. You can talk about anyone in the Premier League era, but Ian Wright, for what he brought to estates especially in London, if you weren't an Arsenal fan, you was an Ian Wright fan. Don't care. If you supported Arsenal around that era, Ian Wright was probably one of the main reasons why he's supporting them. Because he was, even the way he scored goals and celebrated, my man was doing dances that you're doing in, in, in dances in South London. He brought the bogle out quick. Winding it down at Highbury, like madness. It was just like, but that was right and people saw a bit of themselves in him. That's why people loved him. And that was the personality and the character, which was great, always smiling. Had a little bit of a, a rough edge to him as well. But there was a character, there was a personality there. But there was also that as a great player. No one done opposite movement like Wrighty. I remember I played at Highbury as a young kid. I came on for 10 minutes at Highbury. I idolised Wrighty. I loved him. And I came on and I'm sitting, I'm playing at Highbury, playing against Arsenal, unbelievable history, but right he's in front of me wearing a number eight shirt. And they had a corner, we had a corner at their end, I was staying back on the halfway line marking righty. And the corner, just as getting set up, he's just looking at me. And I'm looking over him, because I'm taller, he's only, he's only small, I'm looking over him. And he's looking at me and he's following me, you know when someone's in front of you doing that, looking and you're trying to be like, a wind up. And he was like screw facing me and he, then he, he pushed me in my head like, or something like that. And I'd grab, push his hands and what are you doing? And he was like, all right, like laughing. And I thought, you know what, I hate this guy. And I finished the game, and I remember saying to my mates when I went back to my estate, saying, well, I can't stand right, man. He's like, he ain't what we thought he was, man. The way he treated me like that. And it wasn't until years later I met him again, or a couple of years, a year or so later, I seen him with England or whatever. And he was like, no, nah, man, that's like in the game, man. This is what you do. You've got, got to get under your skin. And I was like, oh, see, I got it now. So he was just a different guy, man. He was just like, Somebody, sorry, back to the opposite movement. He would come, go short to get it to feet and then just bang, go long. A defender's nightmare. And that movement, he would do it three, four times, not get the ball, not bothered. He'd carry on doing it. And he, like, for a defender, you're having to be on your toes the whole time. It's like hard work, man. He was testing you all game. If he weren't pinching you, stepping on your boots, doing the opposite movements, screaming at the ref, screaming at you, screaming at his, his, his teammates. He was just like, this guy's bringing too much to the game, man. And then when he got in, it was good night. He might as well turn around and face the half, halfway line, waiting for the ball to go from a centre kick. Because he was just, here you get in, left and right foot, devastating. And there ain't too many strikers who you say, you know what, if he gets in, he can finish any way you want. He'd give it to you any how you want it. He'd give it to your left foot, he'd give it to your right foot, he'd dink it with left or right foot, he'd volley it left or right foot, he'd curl it left or right foot, he'd drill it low and hard, bottom corner, left or right foot. He'd go uh, top corner, left or right foot. There ain't many that I could say could do that. Like Robbie Fowler had every type of finish with his left foot. I wouldn't, I don't know if he had every type of finish like righty, as clean as righty with both feet. But he can correct me if I'm wrong, Robbie, but... Right, he was just, he was a madman, man. He was just too good. And he, he, you know what was great about him? He looked after the young guys. Like when I was a young kid coming in with England, he, he looked after me, he used to make me feel welcome and stuff like that. So I've always had a soft spot. And do you know what? He signed for West Ham. Come West Ham, I was playing then. And he used to drive past my mum's ass to take me training because he lived in like Shirley or somewhere like that. So he'd come through where my mum lived in Mottenham and then pick me up. Bearing in mind, my man's driving a Rolls Royce them times, or a Bentley, navy blue, I'll never forget it. It was a Bentley, big Bentley coming through the area. People would be like surrounding the car. Like, I said, yeah, man, it's right, he's coming to pick me up, isn't it? Then he'd come up and I'd just get in the front seat, boy, and I'd see everybody going, rah, is that how Rio's moving? But right, he let me feel like that, man. So it was like, it was nice times. So we had good times, like going, going to games. And I remember Martin Darlene tried to give it to him one time. And this is the other side of Wright, he was, he was aggressive, man. Right, Martin Darlene said something to Wrighty on the pitch and he weren't happy. And I remember getting in the change room and he was like, lads, we're going to the, to the bar after, go to the bar, players bar. Like, yeah, 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 can't have that. Martin Darlene took a liberty. I said, what do you mean? Didn't say nothing else. Went up, me, not that I was going to do anything at the time, I was only a young man, but I was just there for backative. I was backing it up, like, <laughs> in the background. But you had, like, some big dogs, like, do you think Johnny Artson, six foot three, massive. 
Ian Dowie, six foot one, two, massive. Real Neil Ruddock, I think, was there. Massive, like big dogs, bro. So I was, I was thinking, right, I'm protection, I'm protected, I'm protected protection. So we went up there. He came in and right, he just went over to him and sat down and said, listen, come outside now. Get yourself outside. Say, talk the talk now. I want to hear it now. Say what you said on the pitch. Martin Darling was like, no, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, that was on the... He said, no, no, don't think you can chat like that to me there and think it's going to be cool. No. And in the end, we had to say, no, right, you leave. It's funny, man. But yeah, it was nice. Just like, yeah. So like, he, he just had like, some of the goals that Wright scored as well, you look at them and you think, right, this guy was doing like playground tricks and like, lobbing goalkeepers, like just taking the mick out of like big goalkeepers at the time, like just dinking it, don't stand that too far because I will dink you, don't stand in your six yard box like that. So um, no, nah, he was, he was again like someone from an estate, the background I'm from, it was nice to see somebody like that who I could relate to playing in the Premier League and playing for England and doing what he'd done. So righty, 